What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Today is Monday, which means Monday Mail Day. I'm going to jump right into it, jump through these questions. Easy work. First question comes from Brandon Singh. If it were possible, do you think boxing should go back to 15 round fights rather than 12? I think no. And the reason being, the medical studies have shown that after when the brain takes so much punishment and swelling and starts swelling that's when it becomes more dangerous for fighters so for one the safety of the fighters and then the next thing is i really don't know other than like a floyd mayweather and a couple other guys i don't really see who would look good in 15 round fights i've even seen some guys they start looking shaky in the 11th and 12th round and, and you know i mean barely hang on and stuff like that so i think some of the older fighters were just grittier tough and they pushed and wheeled their way through those later rounds. And that's when the, the true champion emerged with the Muhammad Ali's and the guys who actually had to fight 15 rounders. So I really just don't know who would fare. Like if you look at Danny Garcia versus Lamont Peterson, he looked gassed. He looked spit in the later rounds. So, I mean, how would a guy like that do? Even Canelo. Canelo fights in spurts. He has showed like some stamina issues. So I really don't even know who would even be successful other than Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather, some people, oh, you just care about Floyd. No, I don't care about Floyd. But, I mean, in fights, he typically gets better as the fight progresses and once he figured you out. So I think he has the conditioning to go 15 rounds. And if you look in his corner, sometimes he's not even breathing too hard. But there's a lot of other guys, especially the younger guys, I don't think they would do great in 15 rounders. So... That and safety, I don't think they should go back to the 15 rounders. They they eliminated it for a reason. Just that's what we've been dealing with for a while. So let's just leave it at that. Next question is from Al Staniland. Can Andre Berto still do anything in boxing? Now, it really depends on what you mean, anything. And I know a lot of people like in or around the, the Andre Berto camp. So much respect to them. So it, it kind of depends on what you're talking about as far as anything. I mean, to be top five, I don't really see it personally just because it's such a stacked division. Now, I do think there's guys that he could beat and there's fights that I would still want to see, like a Victor Ortiz rematch would be good. I think that's a winnable fight, but there's a lot of killers in the division. You got Mayweather, you got Pacquiao, Kell Brook, Keith Thurman, and all those guys are a bit fresher. Even Mayweather, he I mean, he doesn't take much punishment. Pacquiao has a lot of experience. Kell Brook has never just been banged up. And knocked out or anything like that. Tough fight with Carson Jones, but then he came back and avenged that. Keith Thurman still undefeated. Then you got prospects like Earl Spence Jr. So when you look at the welterweight picture, it's extremely deep. There's there's some guys that I think Berto can beat in competitive fights. He already beat Josito Lopez. I think uh, a Mir Khan fight would be good, but they have the same trainer, so that's not likely. I think a fight with Robert Guerrero would be good for Andre Berto, Victor Ortiz. So I think it just depends on who we're matching him with, but I wouldn't pick him to, to beat top three or top five guys personally. So, um, and the reason is, if you look at his last fight, it, it's it's almost like if this was a video game and Andre Berto was a character, how he's been fighting recently, I wish I could snatch the controller and then do my own thing in, instead of what he's doing. Like the Josito Lopez, he was getting buried behind the scorecards. He was losing the first half I had it on my scorecard and it's not because he doesn't have the talent or the skill or the speed it's that he doesn't make the right decisions at the right time came back off a 15 month layoff versus Guerrero right um and then he to me he just he had a weird it was just a very weird game plan like you're gonna come and try to do some shoulder roll off a long layoff Stuff like that doesn't make sense. So, like I said, Ortiz Guerrero rematches, I would be up for something like that, but I just don't see him beating the top five. And it's really because sometimes his game plan just, I don't know what it is about him. Maybe he's um, been through wars or whatever, but his game plan, it just throws me for a loop. Like, you you were letting Josito Lopez, who spent most of his career at 140, right? So, he's not the biggest welterweight. And, like, he filled into the welterweight division, but he's still not the, the biggest guy at welterweight or the strongest guy at welterweight. And he, he let guys who jumped up in weight and came up, like Guerrero, like Josito Lopez, kind of impose their will and dictate the pace when he has all this freaking speed and athleticism. Stuff like that, it, it just, 
I, I can't understand that. And um, I think he's a fighter who fights off emotions as well. Berto, like in the Josito Lopez, he was getting hit, and he ke he keeps wanting to pose and posture. Fuck all that. Just fight your fight, try to get back in it, and that kind of thing. And luckily, he was able to get the stoppage. But he just, overall, from what I've seen in his recent performances, I just don't see him beating the top five. That's just my opinion. Next question is from King Kawan Kawain. Ego, say Mayweather wins his 49th fight. Do you see him trying to break Rocky Marciano's record and going for 50, you know? I would say yes, just because, one, there'd be a lot of money in it, and we know Floyd likes money. And for him to attempt to beat Rocky Marciano's record, especially with the right opponent, I just see that being a blockbuster and being able to generate a lot of money. And I think Floyd Mayweather, he's paid his dues, and he also likes to piss off the doubters, the naysayers. So that would be an opportunity to get paid a whole hell of a lot of money as well as um, kind of spit and, and a slap in the face to all the naysayers and the people who want him to lose and do bad or whatever or not break Rocky Marciano's record. So based on all of the, that complete formula, I would say he, he'll probably will try to go 50-0 and because he'll probably get some ridiculous deal that he can't refuse. He stays in shape. So I would say he'll try to go for it and break the record. Next question is from Elias Artega. Artiega. Coming off a shoulder injury and a long layoff, can Pacquiao still compete with the top welterweights, junior welterweights? Most definitely. I definitely think he can. And I also, me personally, I don't believe the whole shoulder injury. There's just too many conflicting stories. There's a bunch of reasons. But I don't believe it. So I don't even think anything's really truthfully wrong. People are like, oh, he, he, he had the, sur the surgery. I didn't watch it. You know what I'm saying? And he could have a little scar. There's, you could do, you could do a lot of stuff. Like if you have the right doctor, they could repair little things and like non-intrusive type of operations. And again, if you're a fighter, and someone were to explore you were to do it, an MRI, I'm sure there's probably, especially the way Pacquiao fights, I'm sure there's um, tears or little things, small things they could repair. So I, I don't think I think it's embellished. Put it that way. He might have some like ligament damage or something minor, but I think it's being embellished and they're trying to make it as if that is the reason. But nonetheless, I do feel Pacquiao is um, still dangerous. Like he can still, there's a ton of guys he could beat because, I mean, his style, just his style, what he brings to the table. I think there's guys he could beat. And I think he's he still can compete. Like, definitely, your question is, can he still compete? Yes, he could definitely compete. I don't know if he beats all these guys, but he could definitely be competitive. Um, Keith Thurman, that's a that's a good fight. I would love to see something like that. Marcus Maidana. There's attributes where those guys haven't really, or at least in a while, faced what Pacquiao brings to the table. Like, who's the last guy you've seen Keith Thurman fight that had speed like Pacquiao? You know what I mean? That's going to give him the footwork and like movement and, and be all uh, frenetic motion and bouncing all around the place. You haven't really seen Keith Thurman fight someone like that. Same thing with Kell Brook. So despite who we think would win, I think he could be competitive. Even if he were to get stopped in some of these fights, he could still be competitive. Um, he has the power to hurt people. And like I said, I think I think I definitely think he could be competitive, especially at junior welterweight because... I'm just looking at the junior welterweight picture. There's a lot of guys like Broner. I mean, there's a lot of guys he can definitely compete with and or beat. Next question is from Mark Suave 25. Ego, do you think Pacquiao will ever be a successful pay-per-view star again? Um, it depends on your definition of success. My definition of successful, when I'm thinking and interpreting the question, I'm thinking you're referring to what he once was. And if that is the case... And then, no, in my opinion, I don't think he can ever get to that level. I mean, if he fights Mayweather, obviously, that's a the rematch is a big fight. But aside from the Mayweather rematch, like, per, like let's say that doesn't happen, I don't think he'll ever get back to the Hatton, Cotto, De La Hoya days and, and when he was running through guys like that. You know what I mean? The Margarito fights and stuff like that. I just don't think he'll see those type of numbers without Mayweather, period. Because... If you look at it, both guys are getting older, Mayweather and Pacquiao. But since this question is about Pacquiao, Pacquiao hasn't had a knockout in quite some time. You know what I mean? Mayweather, people have grown accustomed to him going the distance. But Pacquiao was known as the tidal wave, the, the ferocious, 
whirlwind fighter and now you don't see it as much you know what i'm saying you can blame it on the religion or age or whatever you want to blame it on but for the whatever reason he's not the same explosive fighter that he once was and i think that's part of his rise to fame and what made him a pay-per-view attraction that he was stopping guys and beating up on Cotto and bludgeoning Margarito's eye and forcing De La Hoya to quit and all this stuff. So I don't think he'll be successful. I think he could still be more successful. Like let's say he fought Terrence Crawford. I, I think that fight could do better than anyone else not named Mayweather. You know what I mean? Or But then again, like if they make Canelo, Cotto, like if they had Pacquiao versus Crawford, and Canelo versus Cotto, I think Canelo Cotto would outdo the numbers of Pacquiao and Crawford. And they're all good fights. So it, it just really depends on the market and what else he's up against. But without Floyd Mayweather, I don't see him doing like crazy, phenomenal, record-breaking numbers or anything like that. I think his um, more of his rise was when he was stopping guys and he looked a bit more explosive. Next question is from Raduku BD. That reminded me of Street Fighter. Raduku! Um, recently, people that hate on Mayweather and call him boring and also call Laura boring have been saying that they, they'd they want to see Mayweather versus Laura. What do, you, what do you think that's all about? Do you think they really want to see a great technical fight? Or are they still on that Mayweather struggles with Southpaw's nonsense? They just hope that Laura can beat him due to his Southpaw stance. Um, this is my honest opinion. I'm going to give it to you flat out, clear cut. The fact is people, okay, if you're calling Mayweather and Laura boring, right? I'm not saying his style or their styles are going to be for everybody. However, the people that are usually saying this, that I've seen, the people that are usually just going out of their way, they're not giving either guy much props at all. Like they could have a spectacular performance. And the fact is, a lot of those people are biased and they have favorites and those two aren't on the favorites list, right? So if you have an immense bias and you hate them, like in to the point where, again, if you said someone was boring, but you, you still gave them credit, then that's something different. But a lot of people that I've seen that say Mayweather and Laura are boring, they go out of their way to slander it. They call him gay runner or marathon Laura or Laura's a bitch or they start talking about Cubans like, you know, what I mean, just racist remarks and and different stuff like that. So ultimately, I think a lot of times the people who are going out of their way to slander guys is because they have a bias. Let's say you're a diehard Canelo fan. Of course, you're not going to um, necessarily like Laura because they're they're kind of enemies and rivals and there's controversy in their particular fight. So for me, from what I've seen, there's a lot of um, people fueled by race and and just hate and just dislike a person to the point where they're not even going to be realistic anyway. So this is an opportunity to fight, to see two people you don't even like, and one of them has to take an L. You know what I mean? So it's a win-win situation for them since you hate both of them, if that makes sense. If you hate Mayweather and you hate Laura and you know one of them has to lose, then that's a win-win situation for you. But then when you say, let's say you hate Laura, but you love Triple G, then some of those same people, they'll be like, oh, why should Triple G fight Laura? Laura's boring, da da da, da and they don't want to fight. Why should Canelo, if you're a Canelo fan, why should Canelo fight Laura in a rematch? That doesn't make sense. Who cares? You know what I mean? So it, it's what I've noticed is, and I do like kind of studies on, the, on people and patterns and stuff like that. The people don't want to see the threats fight their fighter. That's basically what it boils down to. And they don't want, like, if they like both of the fighters, then I've even heard people go as far as saying, oh, they shouldn't fight. I don't want to fight. I don't want to see them fight because they like both fighters. But if you dislike both fighters, then you don't care about them fighting. Perfect example. I remember years ago when Broner was still undefeated, people were like, oh, Floyd Mayweather, he needs to just fight Broner because they were toting Broner as the next Mayweather. And this is before the Maidana lost and, and that kind of stuff. People were saying Mayweather needs to fight Broner. And realistically, a bunch of those people were wanting to see that fight because they didn't like Broner. They hate his personality. He's flashy. And Mayweather's the same thing. He's flashy. He's arrogant. He's a trash talker. So at the end of the day, you realize that one of those guys got to go. Their O has to go because they were both undefeated at the time, right? 
And even though they were friends, people didn't care about that. Even they're like, I don't care. They still need to fight. Yet Lucas Matisse and Marcos Maidana, who are perceived in general as like, you know, what I mean, just warriors and in a lot of different uh, like most people like their styles or, or whatever the situation is. They're not trash talking and glamour and glitz or whatever. They're friends as well. And I've seen people make excuses why Lucas shouldn't have to fight his countrymen and friend Marcos Maidana. And that's the whole point. So there's a lot of times there's race involved and stuff like that. But why? how come Lucas Matisse shouldn't have to fight Marcos Maidana? And that's a great fight. And they fought in the amateurs, right? They fought like three times in the amateurs, if I'm not mistaken. And that's a great fight. But Broner had to fight Mayweather. It's for the same reason they want to see Mayweather Laura. Now, not everybody, because Mayweather Laura is actually a good fight. I'm, I'm even telling you it's a good fight. I think it's a good technical fight. But... I'm talking about the people that are calling and boring and slandering. Like, the real reason is because they don't give a shit about Mayweather and they don't give a shit about Laura. So, if you don't care about either fighter, then you don't care who loses. You win at the end of the day because at the end of the day, somebody is going to catch the fade and take a loss. And you'll be happy with that. You know what I mean? Why else would you want to see two guys you labeled as boring fight each other? That makes no sense. So Laura, being a boring fighter, you don't want to see him fight Triple G, who's an all-out action fighter. But you want to see the two guys you label as boring fight each other. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make sense. Let's say I hate Justin Bieber and I hate Selena Gomez. And then I'm telling him, they're like, oh, we're casting, we're casting for the new Wizard of Oz movie. And I'm like, yeah, Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez should be in that movie. And that's my favorite. Wizard of Oz is my favorite movie, hypothetically. Why would I want my favorite movie to be cast with the two people that I hate or the two people that I don't like their style? You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense for the people that are calling Mayweather and Laura. And again, I'm not saying everyone that wants to see Mayweather and Laura is like this. But again, there's a, a ton of people that I've seen who are going out of their way to call them boring and not appreciate their styles that are pushing for that fight. Because at the end of the day, it's a difficult fight and they don't care who loses. Next question comes from my ninja Jabril. Ego, do you have any idea why HBO stopped doing the face-off with Max Kellerman? Do you think they will bring it back? By the way, man, you mispronounced my name last time. Is Jabril, not DJ Abril, laugh out loud. My bad for mispronouncing your name. And I think the face-off is still around, but it has to be a fight that warrants a face-off. Because I do a, a bit with editing and uh, producing, like video directing, stuff like that. And not even on an HBO scale. And it takes time, energy. And for HBO to produce that, it's going to take money. You know what I mean? Because HBO has stellar production value. Like if you look at the quality of 24-7, all those specials that requires work they got to send a camera crew and a dp that's a director of photography have to have someone to edit they put some music behind it got to get the clearance so all of those things require money plus i don't know personally if the fighters get paid but i would assume max kellerman at least gets paid to do the face-off and it just like i said the fight has to warrant one you know what i mean mayweather pacquiao great fight that could have used the face-off but that was a dynamic fight, and it was very complex to make that fight. They didn't have much time to plan because Mayweather made the, the decision when he did, and they only had a certain amount of time to really train. And the biggest blockage would be, I don't even know if that's a word, but the biggest thing was it was a co-promotion, HBO, Showtime. So who would air it? Would It's an HBO series, so why would Showtime, who was in the driver's seat with Mayweather, they were considered the A-side in this particular deal, why would they let HBO produce a show, have Mayweather on it, and then they get to air it, get all the ratings and all the views, and, and it just promotes their network. So they didn't include stuff like that. That's why you, you notice the promotional stuff leading up to the fight. The buildup was very minimal. Showtime kind of focused on their fighter, a little bit of Pacquiao, and then the At Last special with HBO focused on their fighter. So I think they'll do a face-off at just what fight has HBO done recently that would warrant one. Walters versus Mariaga, good fight, but doesn't really require a face-off. You know what I mean? You look at probably one of the, the best fights on there would be um, Canelo Kirkland or 
Lucas Matisse versus Ruslan Provotnikov. And then Matisse, Ruslan Provotnikov, neither one of them speak English. So you'd have Max Kellerman doing a face-off with two non-English speaking uh, fighters, which is cool. They could do the subtitle thing, but again, it has to be a fight of that type of magnitude where they would even want to do that and make the subtitles. Like Chavez Jr. and Sergio Martinez, they both don't speak fluent English, and that whole face-off was in subtitles. But again, anytime you're the son of a legend like Chavez Jr., and at that point in time, it was before he got stopped by Fonfara and stuff like that, it made sense because this was a championship-level fight. Ruslan Provotnikov and Lucas Matisse wasn't. And Canelo Kirkland, that would you would have had the language barrier in that fight too. Uh, Canelo, he doesn't really speak English. He's working on it, but I don't think it would have been a, a fluid face-off. It would be translating and um, all in all, I just feel like it has to be the right fight. Now, if they make Canelo Cotto, I assume since Canelo's back on HBO and Cotto's on HBO, that would have a face-off because, again, that would be, in my opinion, a worthy fight to bring out the camera crews, the lighting crews, the, the soundtrack people and the gaffers and everybody involved in the HBO productions. That would be a fight of the magnitude where they would want their best to promote it. So I don't think the face-off went anywhere. It just has to be a fight worth their time and worth their energy and the amount of money that it costs for the production to promote that fight. They're not going to do it for a smaller fight like um, Klitschko versus Jennings. I mean... They could have, but just Klitschko was being respectful. Jennings was being respectful. What are you expecting to get from that? Versus Cotto versus Antonio Margarito or Chavez Jr. versus Sergio Martinez. Um, they didn't like each other. You know what I mean? In all those fights, even the Bernard Hopkins with Jean Pascal won, there was a lot of tension in that. Floyd Mayweather and Victor Ortiz, there was some tension, and Mayweather was like, playing him like oh what I'm, I'm doing sports betting i didn't hear what he said you know what i mean just little stuff like that so i think they'll do them it just has to be worth it for them to promote a fight and bring out the big guns to make it happen so i think Cotto canelo would be the next one as far as the fights that i've heard of that are coming up where they would want to do something like that next question is from the d moton 23 when will we get the highly anticipated ego valley return laugh out loud but what are some changes you would like to see in boxing? Ego Veli is coming because I'm starting to get pissed off. So, yeah, that's coming soon. Be on the lookout on the channel. Changes, I would say rehydration. I think they need to find some way. I don't know if they need to do same day weigh-ins, anything, something to kind of regulate. Because there's a there's a guy, there's, it's like a strategy now. You know what I mean? People are cramming their bodies into smaller divisions to, to try to keep and maintain a power advantage. Back in the day, you had a lot of tough guys and gritty guys, and I don't think they were really fighting three to four or five divisions lower than what they should be fighting. You know what I'm saying? So the rehydration is just something in modern boxing that I'm not fully used to. You look at it like Holyfield. This is a cruiserweight, moved up to heavyweight, and had success. You know what I mean? So his chin held up, and he was fighting guys way bigger. Even Mike Tyson fighting bigger guys. So I hope they find some kind of middle ground to regulate the rehydration because there's a lot of people nicholas walters outweighed his opponent mariaga a lot and i mean he still won but it, you have to consider that terence crawford gamboa he had a high rehydration chavez jr does it a lot canelo sometimes has the weight advantage like that um saddam ali's last fight his opponent francisco santana rehydrated 20 plus pounds so hopefully they could figure some way out to to make it minimal, you know what I mean, where it's not these guys coming in 30 pounds heavy in like these ridiculous amounts, and then other than that, things that they probably won't change, which is like judging, bad judging, just stupid scorecards, there should be like strict penalties, if you keep turning in bullshit scorecards, why are you getting rehired, if I get fired from Walmart, and then I get fired from Target, and then I get fired from Toys R Us, why would people keep hiring me, and that's what you see in boxing, some of the same motherfuckers that put out the weak ass scorecards, that nobody believes and it doesn't even make sense. They they keep getting hired and they keep getting big high profile fights. It should be some kind of system. So those are the biggest changes I want to see. And the last question. And I'm going to try to answer both of them. They're both Deontay Wilder related. First part is from Ruben Escobedo. Hey Ego, do you think Deontay Wilder poses any threat to Klitschko? Also, do you think his chin is solid or suspect? Um, Good question. 
I definitely think he poses a, a threat to Klitschko. And really, this is the reason. He's big. He packs a punch. You could say his chin is suspect. But, I mean, I think that whole statement in the heavyweight division, in the current picture, is very, very overrated. Because the, the heavyweight division is starting to emerge. But, I mean, anybody who's getting cracked by a 240-pound, 250-pound man, you know what I mean? You, your, your legs might do the chicken dance. I mean, it, it's just... These dudes are big. Like, there's a lot of big guys. You know what I mean? And then a lot of people put it on Deontay Wilder, but he didn't even taste canvas. I've seen Klitschko knocked out before. I haven't seen Deontay Wilder as a pro knocked out. I've seen an amateur video where he was getting, like, TKO'd. But I'm talking about his professional career. So, yes, he had a difficult third round with Eric Molina, but he got hurt twice and did what champions do. So I think it's, the whole thing is overrated and overstated about the heavyweights. Like, I mean, if you get cracked by a big ass dude, then you know, what I mean, your your legs might buckle. But it's how it's what you do after that. Klitschko made the adjustments with his career to nullify that. He used his height, he used his crazy jab and his wingspan to clinch when they get in too close. I mean, that's what you got to do. Deontay Wilder did that versus Eric Molina. He got stunned, he got hurt in the third round, and he made the adjustments. He didn't want to get knocked out in front of his hometown crowd end up knocking his opponent down three, four times and knocking him out. So I think it's overstated. And the other thing is you look at the other players like Tyson Fury. He actually got floored and hit the canvas versus Steve Cunningham, who was a cruiserweight who moved up. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, Wilder, I think he's, he poses a threat to anybody in the division because he has freakish power and he has a crazy wingspan. He's pretty athletic, but he does make mistakes. So he should, in my opinion, he should fight a couple more fights at least the Pavet can fight before he tries to go after a Klitschko because I noticed some mistakes that I think Klitschko can um, exploit based on that last performance. But, I mean, boxing sometimes is a matter of who lands first. You know what I mean? I've seen guys, and they never they never got warmed, and they got cold caught in the first round, and, and it was lights out. You know what I'm saying? So I think he's definitely a threat to Klitschko because it's finally somebody around Klitschko's height with power, and athleticism and a crazy reach that might give him problems. You know what I mean? I, I, I can't see these small six foot one dudes beating like Tony Thompson and guys like that who, who just aren't big enough, maybe not even strong enough for Klitschko. I just don't I don't see it. I think it's going to have to be a Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder or like a, a more seasoned Anthony Joshua. And then even using him, Anthony Joshua, is someone I'm really looking forward to watching and i like what i'm seeing so far but i mean the whole chin conversation he got dropped in the amateurs by dillian white we haven't seen him fight a top caliber they're bringing him along like they're supposed to and we haven't seen him against a bermain stavern or a tony thompson or Derek chisora like we have with wilder tyson fury and klitschko so really we don't know everything about anthony joshua so some people say wilder struggled uh, Joshua will run through him, but at the moment, Wilder has a better resume than Anthony Joshua, despite what you think would happen in that fight. So the whole chin conversation to me at heavyweight, it's just, it's overrated because like I said, you're getting hit by a big, big men with power. You know what I mean? If, if Wilder was getting hit by somebody like a Kevin Johnson and he did what he did in the third round, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's kind of that's kind of suspect because I've seen Kevin Johnson in with a, a gang of people and he never really hurt them. But I've seen Eric Molina hurt Chris Ariola, who's known as a warrior and known for having a chin. And he has an 81% KO ratio. So, I mean, that's what happens with punchers. Like, like I said, people blow this whole thing out of proportion. If you get caught flush, like Wilder did, from backing straight up, which was a rookie move, in my opinion. But if you get caught flush by a puncher, these things happen. Ty, uh, Tim Bradley could tell you that from the Ruslan Provotnikov fight. Had he outboxed him the whole way, then that might not have been a fight of the year candidate. But he fought a dumb fight, got caught. The whole suspect chin, glass chin thing, to me, my definition is different than a lot of people. For me, when you're getting hurt by people that shouldn't be hurting you or can't hurt a fly or hurt other people in the division that's a problem you know what i'm saying so i haven't yet seen that deontay wilder looked really good versus bermain stavern and then he got caught back and straight up 
maybe underestimated Eric Molina. Who knows? But he, he weathered the storm and battled back. So, again, I think it's overrated in the heavyweight division, this whole suspect chin, because I guarantee you most of the people who talk the most shit and leave these comments, let Wilder punch you with headgear on and see how you feel. Let Klitschko or Tyson Fury, all these dudes, these big-ass dudes, punch you and see how you feel. See if your head's not ringing. So I think it's a bit more overrated. Um, it's easier to tell at these other divisions because they have to weigh in at a certain amount. But heavyweight, is anything goes. Molina outweighed... Um, Deontay Wilder, I think, weighed under 230, like 229 or something. Eric Molina was in the 250s, 260s. So it's it's a different ball game at heavyweight. So that's my thoughts. And the, the final part of the Wilder questions, the diesel. With all the power that Deontay Wilder has, why doesn't he throw to the more to the body? Um, Only thing I could think of, I haven't talked to Wilder about it, but I would just say just training, habit. He started boxing late, and he became a bronze medalist in the Olympics, so... He's a late bloomer. Maybe he just hasn't learned it. And maybe because his arms, you have to, I don't know. I, I would just say experience. That's the best way to put it. Just experience. You look at the guys who are phenomenal body punchers like Canelo and Triple G. They use their power very effectively when it comes to body shots. And Canelo's been fighting in Mexico as a pro since age 15. That's a lot of on the job, on the Johnny on the spot training. Same thing with Triple G, over 400 fights or 300 something amateur fights that's that's what happens you you kind of know those things to not head hunt and stuff like that and you pick up those things and you're like hey i can use my power in this way deontay wilder maybe because he's, he's so big and i don't know maybe the angles harder to to land the body shots and he just kind of goes for what he knows but I, I think just more more or less habit he hasn't been properly trained to utilize the body because Molina looks soft. I, I agree he should have went to the body versus Molina. Molina's body looked kind of soft. But, I don't know. Sometimes going to the body is dangerous, though. You can get countered. But I think ultimately for Wilder, it's just because he's he's kind of a late bloomer and he hasn't had that training to make it a, a habit that, that he uses from fight to fight to fight. Let me know what you guys think of this week, Monday Mail Day. I'll try to get to most questions that I could. And make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.